This is Gabriel Gonzalez for Cage Side Press, and I'm here with newly signed UFC Bantamweight, Jesse Sweegenaris Strader, who's taking on Montel Jackson next Saturday, March 20th at the UFC Apex. Jesse, I mean, first off, I mean, let's address the elephant in the room. You live two minutes down from me. Yeah. It's nice to finally talk to you off of Skype. I mean, what's the last year been like for you? Because obviously we've been dealing with this, and now here we are with a big opportunity, finally. Man, it's been, the last year's been a roller coaster, man. It's been full of ups and downs. Um, and a lot of downs with the no fighting, but you know, here we are, you know, here we're at a, we're at a peak now. So I'm at one of those, one of those ups now, so. So, if I'm, correct me if I'm mistaken, but you were coming off the win at Combate Americas, waiting for a fight, pandemic closes a lot of stuff, Combate hasn't really had fights then, you enter free agency, then what was the conversation like? Because I know you're also, you got a new management company, correct? In the time since we last saw you, so yep. just talk to me, signing with them, and then of course what was the conversation about getting you to the big show? Right, right, so I signed with uh, Upgrade Management, shout out to you guys. Um, and uh yeah man the call they called me uh they called me last wednesday and you know i've been i kind of been i kind of been like expecting something to happen so i've been ready so i've been ready for a fight so whether it was the ufc or building up my record a little more somewhere else but the fact of the matter is we just couldn't get anyone to take a fight with me and this popped up on wednesday and you know i was already ready for it so so that's kind of how it went and now and now we're here so taking this fight, you got the call Wednesday, about a week and a half-ish to be ready for a Saturday fight. So let's hit all the usual suspects. How's the weight going? How much were you training? All of that. Uh, so I was, like I said, I was preparing for a fight already. So I was training twice, two, three times a day already. And the weight is exactly where it needs to be. I literally couldn't be in a more perfect place for this last minute opportunity. And now talk to me about Montel Jackson. Obviously, he's got some UFC experience behind him. Just what do you think of his game and what he brings? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, there's no easy fights in, in the UFC at all. So, of course, he's tough. He's got a he's got 9-2, and two, I think. Uh, he's coming off a, a loss. Um, but I know he's hungry. I know he's hungry. He probably wants to get that back. So, uh, I'm, expecting a, I'm expecting a hungry, motivated fighter. And, and I'm... And I, I think he's got a good game. He's a, he's a five foot ten. He's longer. Um, he's a southpaw, rangy. He's got decent. He's got good ground, good takedown defense. Uh, so it's a tough opponent, man. It's a game opponent, and nothing motivates me more than a game opponent, man. I mean, let's talk to me about this because for people who don't know, Lancaster, California, small town. It is home to some of the up and rising stars of the world of mixed martial arts, of course. But you know. It's quite a jump to go from Lancaster, California to now fighting ESPN, the biggest promotion in the world. Just how are you feeling just your journey up to this point? Oh, man, I feel good, man. This has always been the goal. This has been the goal even since I was in high school wrestling. The goal was always to get to the UFC and the goal was always to get to the top. So this feels like like I accomplished part of that. But I'm not finished yet, and I want to complete so much more in this game. And it feels really good being, I, I believe I'm the only male fighter ever to come out of the Antelope Valley to ever fight in the UFC. So, I mean, I love that. I love that. Ex I love that. I love that pressure. I love putting the city on my back and going out there and representing. And, and that's what I always wanted, man. I, I really, this is something I've looked forward to, and, and I was just prepared. And what I find crazy, you got this big fight, you've got good stuff going for you. And then we see on Instagram, you're also a coach in the celebrity boxing. <laughs> I mean, talk to me about this. So not the Mike Tyson thriller, but you still are coaching a very famous pop star, Aaron Carter, yep. against former Laker NBA champion Lamar Odom. How did this come about? Was it upgrade management said, Jesse, he needs a coach and you got in there? How did this come together? Man, actually... The, it's so crazy, man. Like, um, before I even got this call for the UFC, probably like a month ago, somebody tagged me in an Aaron Carter post, and they're like, oh, Aaron Carter's trying to fight uh, in a celebrity boxing fight. And so I commented, I said, hey, good luck to him. I hope he does well. And if he needs a trainer, hit me up. The man hit me up, 
and we started getting to work. And, and it literally it happened that easy. He hit me up. We exchanged phone numbers, we talked on the phone, we set up the training, and it happened just like that. And that's gonna happen June 12th in Atlantic City. Uh, at gonna the, be in uh, the corner? Yeah, I'm gonna be in Aaron Carter's corner, coaching him against Lamar Odom. It's gonna be a good one. How's this ball? No, give it to me straight, man, we're friends. Is he getting it? Does he still need some work? Where's he at? Look, I'm gonna tell you straight up, uh, Aaron Carter is, he surprised me, he impressed me, because Every, I, I, he, he's got a lot of haters that come out and they message me and it's a lot of weird stalker type things um, but like so I really wasn't sure I really hadn't heard or talked to him so when I showed up okay I was like dude's got dude's got some pop on his punches okay the, the form is gonna tighten up the technique is gonna sharpen up uh, everyone's judging off of three sessions but we got three months to get this done so uh, honestly, I, I feel good about it. He, if you, if you watch him, I didn't even know this. He was on Dancing with the Stars. The dude's got some footwork. And I was like, dude, that's, that's him. That helps a lot. So, uh, so just stay tuned for that, man. That, I think everybody's going to be shocked and surprised at that one, honestly. Haven't seen both sides. We're in the middle of the desert. That's why you see stuff lying around. <laughs> that, hey, in Low Valley, man, this is this is the desert. Yes, it's like you want to know what, where they at. It's like this is what happens when you're in the city and like those other people. That doesn't happen. I mean, having been on both sides now, obviously legit fighter in the cage. Now coaching one of the celebrities. How do you feel about all this? The Logan Paul, Ben Askren. I mean, are you? I guess I'm assuming you are pro celebrities getting in there. Is that right? I mean, hey, if it brings attention to the fight game, then I'm all for it. I, I, it's it's entertainment at the end of the day. Um, but what I want to do is get Aaron Carter to perform really well and impress people. So, like, that's my goal. At the end of the day, I want to get them ready. I want to get them sharp. So the celebrities doing the boxing matches, it's all good with me as long as they work hard at it and take it seriously. For the record, who do you got? There we go, his fans out here in the building. Uh, for the record, who do you got, Logan Paul or Ben Askren? Because I feel like fewer people are, you know, knowledgeable about celebrities it, doing this. Logan or Jake? Lo it, sorry, Jake, 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 Jake. Sorry, Jake Paul, okay. my bad. Yeah. Um, man, you know what? I'll be honest, dude. I'll be honest. So Ben Askren's a pro athlete. He's fought before. But his game has never been striking. And I saw Jake Paul put down a, he knocked out a NBA player. So I really, I really don't know. But I think, I think Jake has a shot for sure. Because I know he could pop and punch. But at the end of the day, Ben Askren's been in that high level competition his entire life. He's, he's won national titles. He's won world titles. So at the end of the day, I'm going to give my, I'm going to give the edge to Ben Askren. But I mean, I think Jake has a shot. No, I think it's going to be very entertaining. There are a lot of X factors in there for sure. Let's get back to you, man. I mean, this coming Saturday, going to be out there, UFC debut. Have you envisioned it? How does it go? What do you want that feeling when they raise your hand to feel like all of it? Man, I've seen it all. I, I've, uh, I've been here a thousand times in my mind, over and over, and I've seen my victory, and I've seen my hand raised, and, and, I'm, and I'm seeing a finish by me. So whatever I got to do, I'm going to do it. A lot of people, they, they see my small record, but what I see when I see five and one, four knockouts, I see, uh, I see 15 fighters that won't take the fight with me. I've seen leagues that don't have, that can't find a fight for me because no one will take it. So this is my, it's, this is my level of competition. I have a small record. I don't have the experience in the cage, but I have the experience. I have the experience. I've been training and, and I'm prepared. So I got to ask you now, because you guys are very public about it on Instagram. If you don't know they're together, you're clearly not following either one of them. Joy Fulco, NBC The Voice veteran. When people say like, oh, I sing, like, no, really, she, she's fantastic. Are we talking about, you know, hey, maybe some live music on your way out in the, down the line? What are we talking about with this? I could definitely see that. I could definitely see that. She does a she does an she has amazing original music and she does an amazing national anthem. So I could definitely see that. I and and how amazing, how incredible would that be to have to have my girl Joey 
uh, seeing something special for me going out, man. That would get me amped up, that's for sure. My final question, man. This is going to be a lot of people's first introduction to you. What do you want fans to know when they watch Jesse Strader next Saturday? I want them to know that, you know, I'm a humble, confident fighter and that I always come to fight for a finish. And, and, and I want them to know that no matter what fight I'm in, it will be exciting. 100%. I can attest to this, man. I've yet to see a boring Jesse Strader fight. I'm not just saying that. Go YouTube it and you'll be like, dang, it's going to be a good show. Jesse, it's a pleasure to have followed your career. I think you were only about 1 or 2 and 0 when we first met and realized we live right next to each other. Yeah. And now to watch you from Combate doing your thing and now a big opportunity, just best of luck, man. It's been great to see it so far. And obviously we're cheering on for a victory on Saturday, man. Thank you. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate you so much. I think you were my first interview as a pro fighter, and now you're the first interview I've done going into the UFC. You know what? This is how we do it in the Antelope Valley, ladies and gentlemen. Represent. That's all it is. Represent. Jesse, it's going to be a good one. Best of luck, man. Thank you.